that water yes what's below the water before we do that i just want to draw your attention to this little experiment that i've done there you go um get yourself a bowl of water um and, pu and put a stone or something in there or um anything basically a, a kitchen implement uh, anything and stand at different positions so stand just below eye level and see what you can see and then maybe stand up a bit further and then see what you can see and then stand up fully and then see what you can see and that's going to give you an idea of what you can see in the water i know it sounds a bit far-fetched but it does work um it just gives you a little bit more when you're working in the studio you need to get this these things in your mind and uh, this is all helps towards the actual composition as well as of the painting um the other thing we've got to be we've got to consider also is our position relative to the sun there we go and this and, and and the values that's going to give us so if the sun is to our left the lightest value is going to be falling to the left and then you're going to have a medium value of color and then the, the darkest value of color so highlights midtones and shades so relative to where you were standing and where that light source is you've also got to bear that in mind of these values falling onto your subject so you've got your highlights your midtones and your shades or your shadows there you go so there's two little diagrams that i've done there for you i hope that will help anyway i'm not going to discuss paints and brushes today uh, because that's not really relative to what i'm trying to show you i'm showing more about light reflection what's under the actual um river or stream or body of water that you were painting that's what we're going to be talking about today why water is transparent uh, well not so much why it is but it is transparent so we need to paint things under the water before we can actually think about putting the water in place um okay so without further ado i'm just going to grab a brush um i'm going to mix up I, i'm going to i got a little bit of burnt umber there we go a little bit of burnt umber a little bit of uh, water or medium mix whatever you want to use um, so I'm just gonna use in a short flat and explain everything that I'm doing I, I want a bank to start there and I want this bank to come up around there like this and down there so there's there's your riverbed your riverbed is going to be you this is your riverbed this is going to be your bank where the grass is growing and all that and and that's it and then your water your water is just going to disappear wherever there we go it's as simple as that now we want to do and we're going to add some um things into this bank so let, let's 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 see if we can put a, like a pebble or a rock or or, or something that there's half out the water and half the in the water there we go so let's let's put something like that there okay and we'll put another little one maybe there or something like that we've also got to think about what's under the water so we've got to paint these pebbles in and things first thing i'm going to do is paint in the water bed okay or the bed of the water i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up a slightly bigger brush for this so i'm gonna go for an inch short flat um i've got some um uh yellow ochre let's just put a little bit of yellow ochre a little bit of raw sienna yellow ochre your raw sienna just for the sake of this i've got a ground on this canvas so I've got a, I've got a quite a a lightish a lightish colour going in. So this is the river bed. We need to paint that in. Now you can paint this in thickly if you want, or you can paint it in thinly. Um, red red um, uh, red, uh, well, <laughs> raw sienna <laughs> red sienna raw sienna is very transparent. So it's it's actually going to pull through that. Um, ground that i've got on which is pretty good so just think of this as a as a riverbed a little bit of yellow ochre coming in think of our our lights as well as we come into this area which is the bank and under that rock it's going to get slightly darker why because we've got some shadows there remember what i said about the light source so i'm going to pick up a little bit more burnt amber onto my brush i'm not cleaning my brush there we are let's just get these these shadows coming in and then bleeding that in there like that 
And bird number 10 is to be a little bit transparent as well. Put a bit more shadow up there like that. And paint in horizontally like this. Just bleeding that in. This is a good example of um, this is a good example of a riverbed actual, actually fa in actual fact. So let's just get that little bit of this. And the idea is n not to um, not to rush these things. These things can't be rushed. So let's just get a little bit more yellow walker in there. Get a little bit of that dark colour around there like that. Just make it look like some sort of a riverbed. And let's just continue to do that. Now I got a little bit of red oak here. Um it's quite it's quite a red red colour. Um where I live with is um it was an iron ore mine and um so, so uh, even today um around that area you still got this red colour underneath the riverbed. So I'm just gonna put a bit of that in. You you take a photograph of um you take a photograph of an area that you live and decide on what type of uh, um, painting you were going to paint and just use these um, things that you're learning here, these basic principles and adapt that to your own particular painting and um, and just let me know how you get on. That would be interesting. So we need to just spread that in like that. Now, what we can do is just get a little bit of yellow ochre and I'm just going to add a little touch of white to that. So a little bit of yellow ochre, a little touch of white or whatever you decide that works for your painting. As I said, this is just an example. So let's just paint a couple of pebbles. Now these pebbles are going to be on the river bed and they're going to be catching the light. So the tops of these could be catching the light and the bottoms are going to be... There's car going past. <laughs> A couple of these uh, lighter ones and, and, and darker ones. We're going to put some darker ones in in a minute. Um, so the, the, these could be just catching the light like that. So a couple of lighter, lighter pebbles. I'm not going to do loads of pebbles. I'm just going to do enough just to just to show you. I'm taking the paint off as I normally do with my brush. And I'm just going to smooth down the base of those like that. Just to blend them. Just to sit them down onto that riverbed. Put a little bit of shadow under them later on. There we go. Going back to um, the half inch short flat. <clears throat> I'm picking up a little bit of burnt dumb, a little bit of black. A little bit of burnt dumb, a little bit of black. Just a dark colour. That's all you need is a, is a possible dark colour. And I'm just going to, again, just going to put a few little pebbles and things in like this. tiny rocks now this 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 rock is going to be there so let's put it just put a bit of shadow under that rock like that and let's put a bit more shadow now coming in under this river bank like that bringing that down there like that. A little bit of paint lift, so I'm gonna have to let this dry in a second. I'm going back into my other brush now that we put the light rocks in, and I want to put another rock, a nice light rock there. I'm gonna put some highlight on this rock. There you go. I'm gonna just get a smallest amount of blue on that brush, and I'm just gonna go in. And this mix of that yellow oak and it's got a bit of a green tinge to it. Just going to grow in and just put that little bit of water in there like that. And we will bring that down in a second. There we go. Just to finish that area off, I think. Before we do any more, I think the good idea is to get some green mixed up. So I, all I'm going to use is Mars black and some uh, yellow. Um, you can you can use any colour green; it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to make this quite dark because what I want to do is put in some 
dark area like this. There we go. This will all make sense. It will all make sense, as you know. If you've painted with me before, <laughs> you'll know this will make sense. So it's just a block out, really. Just a block out of colour. So just get that dark colour in. In order to show light, we have to have dark. And it's the same if you want to put light coloreds down. You're going to have to, you can't put light colour on top of a light colour because it won't show. So you've got to, you've got to put light on top of dark. And, um, and that's, that's just it, really. So let's just get some nice dark green down like this. Let's add a little bit more black, a little bit more yellow. Let's just get this lovely color. And play around with mixing colors. That's what I suggest you do. There's, there's, there's no rules in art, really. And there's no stress in art. It's only, the only stress in art is what you make. And that's the thing you've got to remember. The only stress in art is what you make. So we, we're just going to continue putting this block out in. And... I don't use great amounts of paint and I use quite thin layers um, because I, that's just the way I paint. Um, you can find your own methods um, with painting with acrylics and there's loads of ways of doing things and you'll just find the way, you'll find your techniques, you'll just find the way that suits you and that's all that counts. Now what I'm going to do is just chuck that in the bin a minute. I'm just going to get a little bit of moisture on my brush and a little bit of thin green. I'm just going to put a little bit of green just in to this water there like that. And I think we're going to have to dry this off in a second because it's getting starting to lift the paint now and that's not what we want to do. We don't want to lift that paint. Picking up a little detail brush and just wet the end of that brush and all I'm doing, going to do now is just bed these little pebbles down. There you go. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. While I'm at it, I think I'll just run a little bit of shadow around the bottoms of these pebbles like this. To make it look as if it's sitting there. Now I'm going to use a hairdryer as I normally do during my painting processes and this is just to speed up the drying process. So I've just got another little short flat. Um, what I've decided to do is get a little bit of blue very lightly and I'm just going to put a bit of blue into that area there like that. Very very thin wash of colour maybe it's a bit too bright so we need to lighten that up a touch there we go so it's a very thin wash of color and the reason i did that is because i just want that to represent possibly a little bit of sky there and um i want that background to come through that i put on there so i'm just going to go over that green just to balance that off just to make that a little bit of blurrier there we go and that'll all come in into its own in a second um, okay, so what I need to think about now is um, some more stones, I think. Uh, and, and, and for this, I've got a toothbrush. Um, this is pretty good. You, you should have seen me uh, using this. If you haven't already, then please pop along to um, www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Clive 5 Art. That's where all my lessons are. So I've got a little toothbrush like that. There you go. I'm just going to moisten that a little bit in some water and I'm just going to go into any colour I want a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of raw sienna a little bit of burnt umber just get a, a, a multitude of colours onto this toothbrush and I'm just going to bring it up to the canvas like this and I'm just going to flick it on so i got a couple of little tiny dots basically, a bit of burnt umber now I'm just going to make sure that's nice and dark I might add a little bit of black to it 
So a nice fully loaded um, toothbrush and I'm just going to approach the canvas and just flick like this. And all that's going to do is look, put little pebbles and things in. There you go. Make it look as if it's grit and a couple of stones on the bottom of that. And this is the effect that's going to make things look underwater. There we go. I don't want to overdo that, so I'm just going to put that into some water. Um, I'm going to get a little brush now. Any little brush will do. I've just got a small filbert brush. And the head's just fallen off my filbert brush. There we are, so we'll chuck that in the bin. i got a little detail brush. And I'm just going to remove those spots off the tops of these rocks. I'm going to get a little bit more yellowy ochre and I'm just going to put a few more highlights on the top of these rocks now because the, the light is reflecting on the top and not so much on the bottom but it's looking like as if it's some rocks under the water As don't forget we're painting the riverbed at the moment not not the water this is what's under the river under the water I should say under the river <laughs> I get confused sometimes. So just put a little bit of highlight. Don't forget what I said about the way light works and where you're standing. You could be standing on the bank now and you could be looking down at this and this is what you're going to see. This is what you're going to see. And you've got a little little bit of light reflection on a few things like this. There we go. You're going to have a few brighter spots and a few darker spots. Not too, you don't want too light. Yeah, let's get rid of that bit there. Yeah, it takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of practice. Okay, so let's have a look at this actual um, slope. Now, we got this slope coming in here. So let's just get this pulling down. That's, a, that's the green one. I don't want the green one, do we? We want the brown one. <laughs> Let's get a little bit of this burnt umber and let's put some shadows under this big rock that's just sticking out of the water there. There we are. There's a shadow there and a shadow there and that's going to come across like that. What we're doing now is painting the reflections as well, not just the, the bank itself. So this is going to be quite dark under there. There we are. This is the burnt umber. A little bit of black and burnt umber. There we go. A little bit of black and burnt umber just to get that really dark, like, soil effect that we get from these things. And just pull that down like that. There we go. You can see that now, can you? I'm going to go back into this little brush. Um, we've got a little detail brush here. Again, I want to put some highlights onto this rock now. I'm going to use a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of um, yellow ochre, and I'm just going to paint this rock in. Oh, there's another rock there. It's quite in shadow there, so we need to put some shadow in. Remember what I said about shadows and, and that. There we go. And get some shadow onto this rock. Okay. Get some of that burned umber and black, and let's just put some more. area there, under there, like that. Where's a bit of that green? Let's get a bit of this green mix now and just... Put a bit of... green. Just like this. Get we still paint we paint in reflections now, not the riverbed. This is reflections of the grass above it now. 
there we go. There's reflections of the bar grass above it. There you go. So there you go. It's the same dark green as we put up there. Now we can starting to see something going on there now, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in um to the the brush selection now is my um strip lining brush if i can find it uh, where's i put my strip lining brush and we're going to go in the, the dark green i'm just going to mix some more yellow to it so i'm, I'm going from like a mid green now i'm going for a mid green there we go and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put some in fact, let's go. Let's go a very light green first. I think I'm ahead of myself now. We want to go lighter green first. Let's just get some grasses in there against that dark. Against the dark. This is what we want. Get on the flick. So you use your brush at this now. I'm just getting the flick out a little bit and if it's not bright enough add a little bit of white just to sparkle it up because grass is going to be catching the sunlight so it's going to be quite yellow in, 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 in effect so you need a lot of these you need a lot of these to come through like this these are big thick uh, reeds and things like that so all these are big thick reeds and We just start placing them on like this. Just going to be catching the light more towards the edge. There, like that. And more coming from the center. There we go. Let's put a few of these in. And just use a couple of different greens. Just use, just put in a couple of different tones of green here and there. Maybe some a little bit bluer than others, some a little bit yellow than others. Um, don't be afraid to, to 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 throw these leaves in. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm just mixing some different types of greens. I'm using yellow ochres and blues and all this type of stuff, and just put in some reeds like this there you go using this brush very thin paint I'm just getting these leaves to just float around like this this is not about the leaves though <laughs> This is not about the leaves, this is about what's under the water. <laughs> I know we're not I know we're not actually painting water here, but we can't we can't show this w without the effect of the leaves and stuff that's popping up here. There you go, just keep building up. this area and all these different types of blue greens and yellowy greens and th keeping all this in mind a little bit darker down here now we need to be a little bit darker as it progresses down we need to we need to darken the greens up a bit because these are going to be in shadow here and now put in I flew flicky marks into there as well, like that. There we go. Now we're starting to paint what's on the water rather than what's under the water. <laughs> it's quite confusing, isn't it? You know, we think these things are easy when we watch people do them and and that we think they oh that's easy, but it's not that easy, is it? Not really. 
And we all got to learn. And it's all about tones and and things and you know, understanding how paint works and understanding how light works and there you go. is not to overdo stuff really but this is just a lovely way to demonstrate possibly a riverbed or something that's that's going on you can see it's just building up building up in a nice simplistic way What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a something coming out of the water now. A little bit of grass just coming out of the water like this. And that may be because. There's a little bit of without banking. It's just come out like this. Oh, it's quite dark in there. There we are. Let's set set that off a touch. Let's get a little bit of soil. And I'll just bring that up like that. There you go. And then again. Just bring a few of these. Bigger leaves now, just. Like that. There you go. Now we want, now we want to um, get a, a nice short flat. And I'm going to wash this short flat. I'm going to wash it really well, in fact. Don't want a discoloration. We don't want a discoloration. I've changed my camera angle. I'll keep talking to that one. <laughs> we don't want a discoloration on this. We want a very, very light very very light bluey white now so I'm gonna I, I got a bit of white and I'm just gonna put a smallest amount of blue to it but I'm gonna thin that down quite quite a lot and what I want to do now is just bring bring in a line around like that I'm just using your paint now see a brush on the side like this and just get some reflections on this water like as if there's a little bit of water on there like that there you go a bit more paint on my brush again I'm going to put a little bit of water on the line just coming down there like that The point is not to overdo it, but just to make it subtle, keeping it flush with the canvas. Use this line there. Use the bottom of your canvas there as a guide if you wanted to. You could you could just rest your hand on that and just do that if you want. Whatever suits you. This is not... All it is, is all you're doing is I'm just painting a little bit of light sparkling on this water. There you are. That's all you're doing is painting a little bit of light sparkling on that water. And we could get a, a detail brush now. We could we could get another bit of white, a bit stronger. And then we could just just 
just emphasize just a little bit of strength around yeah like that highlight in the highlights highlight in the highlights just making it look as if it's And just for the fun of it, we could get some white and we could put maybe a butterfly there like that. And we could reflect him in the water a little bit like that. And it should be a but butterfly of sorts. a little bit of, just put a smallest amount of colour in him I think, let's just put a little bit of, a couple of little bit of pattern in and red always sells a painting so if we're going to sell this one we can put a little bit of red in him as well, there we are, it looks like it represents a butterfly, there we go, there we are, one, uh, one lesson to show you how to paint underwater. So if, um, if you like that, then um, well, we'll be looking at another aspect of painting water. So thank you very much. And, um, well, I'll see you on the next lesson. Bye. Hey, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk